Hello guys, I got 10 minutes to talk. I'm able to shut the windows now because it's cool enough in the evening, you know. This camera shuts off after 10 minutes. Don't ask me why. Anyway, what I want to talk about is, is something that could possibly happen with Bitcoin. Not, it's not highly probable, but it could happen. Now, you all know the Chinese are in a trade war with us. And, you know, uh, they haven't really done a lot yet. The trade war is escalating. It's putting an awful lot of pressure on China to um, fight back. I'll just put it bluntly, fight back. They've only got about two good options left to fight back. Uh, one of them is the U.S. Treasury bonds they hold. They hold $1.1 trillion in U.S. Treasury bonds. And they've got a monopoly on the world's market of rare earth, uh, rare earth, what they call rare earth minerals used in electronics and stuff. They could cut off the supply of rare earth minerals. These are two of their nuclear options. I'll call these nuclear options because... If they do either one of these two things, it's going to really affect It's going to really affect the world's economy. And it's going to hurt China too. But you know, in a war, and it's a trade war, sometimes people will do things that will hurt themselves in order to get the other guy. You know, if they think that it's going to get the other guy harder than it's going to hit them, then they'll do it, even though it's going to have repercussions on them too as well. You know, so... Where I'm going with this is, is the U.S. Treasury bonds that they hold, $1.1 trillion. Now, I've been thinking about this a lot, and if this trade war escalates, there's a, there's a, a strong prob probability at a certain point that they will do a Treasury bond sell-off. When, when they sell those U.S. Treasury bonds, they convert them into dollars. And... Of course, they hate the dollar. Oh, they're getting so... Russia and China and Iran, these countries are all linking together. North Korea, they're linking together and they're polarizing the world. You have one side, which is the West, and another side is the East, and it's becoming more and more polarized. You know, these countries are linking together. They're grouping together. They're basically ganging together. You know, Russia and China, Iran... Uh, 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 North Korea, uh, you know, these countries are all linking together. And, and they're making their own trade unions and everything else. So if they sell off these treasury bonds, they're not going to keep it in dollars. They're going to buy something with those dollars. They don't want dollars. And that's, that's part of the operation, part of what they'd be trying to do, is destroy the dollar, and what better way than spending a lot of dollars, because that puts dollars into the system, and that basically really uh, tears the U.S. dollar to pieces. They could tear the U.S. dollar to shreds. So, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'm thinking, what are they going to buy with all those dollars after they convert them into dollars, these treasury bonds? We're looking at maybe they might sell off $500 billion worth, and then they got $500 billion to spend. On what? Well, thinking about it for a long time, Chinese love gold. They love gold. But they don't like GLD. They don't like the paper derivative contract of gold. They like real gold. And if you're working with something like a half a trillion or even a trillion dollars and you need to spend it, and you go into the gold market with that kind of money and you want real gold standing for delivery? Well, it's getting the gold market's getting so tight now, it's hard to buy one ton of gold. If you went out right now and wanted to buy one ton of real gold and have it delivered, you, first off, you'd have to pay a massive premium. And the second thing about it is, is you'd have to go to exclusive dealers and then they'd have to accumulate it for you. I mean, it's not that easy. And a ton of gold is not even not even part of one billion dollars worth of gold. And we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars worth of gold. So the gold market I don't think could satisfy the amount of money that they have that they want to spend. That's basically where I'm going with this. 
Uh, so even if they did decide, hey, you know what, we're going to go for gold, we're going to go for real gold, we're going to buy all up everything that's available for sale, and they bought it all up, uh, still they would be left probably with uh, uh, half of their money spent, you know, or maybe even less than half of their money spent. And they'd have all the gold and they'd drive the gold price up to the moon. So then they'd have all this money left over. What do you buy? In this, in this environment in the world, what, do they, what are they going to buy? Are they going to buy into the stock market, the United States stock market, with that, with that ex extra money? Uh, they could possibly invest some of it in their own economy. But here's the thing I'm getting at. Bitcoin... Best performing asset of the year. What if the Chinese were to decide to spend some of their, tri their, their trillion dollars at U.S. Treasuries on Bitcoin? Can you imagine how... Uh, they, they'd drive the price up massively if they did that. And, you know, it's kind of like none of this has happened yet. I'm just kind of speculating about this whole thing. But... You know, the Chinese people have already been some of the biggest purchasers of Bitcoin out there. You know, they, they're, they're part of the reason why Bitcoin is standing right now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's what, $12,000? Uh, part of the reason for that is the Chinese. Chinese, they like gold and they like Bitcoin. Believe it or not, Chinese like Bitcoin, you know. And this could be a way, too, of digging at the United States dollar, undermining the dollar, because at some point, if Bitcoin gets high enough, it, it's going to start to have a life of its own, you know? And uh, so much excitement will come into the marketplace, and this is when we're going to see institutional investors. So the Chinese, they have teams. In China, they have teams that actually sit down around the table and they talk things over, and there's an old saying, more, one mind, uh, more than one mind working on something, you know. And they're able to figure things out. They're very, very intelligent, the Chinese. Do not underestimate their intelligence. They know that the best, they're, they're thinking over there right now, what's the best way for us to get back in this trade war? What's the best way for us to... Uh, to, to fight back. This is what they're thinking, and they're coming up with ideas. So, I mean, if I've thought of it, these teams of Chinese have probably thought of it as well. These teams that work together, and, and they're unified in their ideas of what to do, you know, again, to fight back against Donald Trump and his trade war. And so, I, I'm considering this as a possibility, because when I look at it, I think to myself, what route, what avenue do they have other than to buy, other than Bitcoin and gold? To, you know, there are other places they could put the money, but there are, they've already got their factories and stuff. They've, they've got a lot of factories over there in China and stuff. And, you know, they support those factories with money that they create out of thin air. The, the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, just creates the money and gives it to these factories, you know. And so uh, the thoughts went through my head that there is a possibility that they could use that money to buy Bitcoin and drive the price up, and then their investment becomes multiples higher than when they purchased. So say they purchase at 12000 they drive the price up to 30000 or 40000 then their then their dollars have actually worked for them, and they've actually accumulated more. And knowing full well if they drive it up to those prices, that U.S. investors are going to get involved and help drive it up even further, enhancing the Chinese investment. They know all this. They've probably talked it all over between themselves, and it might be one of their next moves down the line, not right away, but down the line that's coming, up and coming. You have to look ahead on this geopolitical chessboard to try to figure out, hey, you know what? What could happen in the future? And what's most likely to happen? 